Hi and welcome to Learn Cocos TV episode number seven. Today I want to show you a tic-tac-toe game made in Cobalt Script and a couple of other things. Um, I get started right away with a presentation of Cobalt Script that I prepared. And um, the key concepts are I want to write Lua code and it's uh, should do the same things uh, that I can do in Objective-C, just in Lua. And um, the way to do that is um, you can call any Lua function um, for each node and uh, the function simply receives the self as, which is the, the Cocos node, and um, you can act on that self. And you can also create um, global variables in Lua. You can use the uh, properties as you would in uh, Objective C. So basically, my tag is equals self dot tag and self dot visible. Set it to yes. Why are state machines so fast? Um, they are fast because you only define them in Lua, um, but the actual execution at runtime happens in Objective C, and that's so that's going to be fast. And the big point is, um, it's uh, possible, and i um, planning to do this, uh, is to parallelize the state machine execution um, with Grand Central Dispatch. Um, so you can um, utilize the second core on iPad 2, iPad 3, iPhone 4s, and all newer devices. And I also want to have reusable code and, um, you know, model view controller. So um, as a model, you have abilities which you can attach to any node and they can um, either modify node properties like position etc as you can see on the right and um, they can also store custom data typically abilities are short snippets of code that are reusable that can be applied to any node whereas behaviors um, combine the abilities and the example to the right you see that uh, there's a restrict position ability which is checked um, if Basically, the node um, has reached its uh, allowed uh, area of operations, so to speak. And if that happens, um, it changes the movement ability's velocity um, so that the object bounces off the border. And that's what behaviors are for. They also drive game logic by um, accessing other nodes, um, by accessing ex to external systems like uh, Game Center or whatnot. Um, so basically, that's your controller. And all the Cocos nodes that you're used to, um, CC Sprite, CC Label, and also your custom CC node classes, um, they only represent the view. Another thing is, of course, easy scene setup. Uh, Lua is very helpful in this regard because um, the scene is uh, created as a Lua table, which is a hierarchical uh, data structure. And um, it's basically, it's, it's a very natural tree layout because um, you have the scene at the top, um, then you add more nodes, for example, a layer, and the layer can contain a sprite. And um, basically, you just stick um, your nodes into the other nodes, and you see this visually re represented by um, different levels of tabs and uh, tab sizes. You can also move objects around pretty quickly from one part of the hierarchy to another, and um, this makes it very versatile. And also, of course, it's tool friendly, so. Um, should be easy to read and write from a tool. Runtime allocations and deallocations are a major source for performance problems um, for a lot of developers. Um, creating a CC node object or a CC sprite or even a CC label is a relatively expensive operation and you don't want to do this um, during gameplay. One solution is uh, to uh, use node pools which will be supported natively by the scene setup. Um, basically you say uh, I have this sprite here with this image and I like to um, reserve space for 50 of these sprites and the system, you can then spawn uh, new sprites which basically just turns it visible and repositions it and um, uh, when, when that sprite is no longer used, for example the bullet has hit a target, it will simply be disabled and hidden and um, the overhead created by having those in memory and um, well updating them um, is so minimal uh, compared to alloc dealloc um, that it's a wise thing to do. And finally um, the scene setup also allows you to um, very naturally uh, access each node in the hierarchy by um, uh, typing in running scene which is always the currently running scene. Running scene dot background layer which is as you can see the name of the layer here 
um, running scene dot background layer dot grid dot position dot x and set it to 10 and that's how you change the uh, position of the uh, grid sprite here. So pretty straightforward. So as for requirements, um, you will need Cobalt 2D 2.x, which is not out yet, but um, will be coming soon. Um, it doesn't support uh, native Cocos 2D iPhone, so there will not be a separate um, uh, version of Cobalt Script separate from Cobalt 2D. And um, since uh, it's going to be running on Cocos 2D 2.x, um, you will need to have a OpenGL ES 2.0 device, um, which means iPhone 3GS, iPod Touch, third generation or iPad 1 as the minimum. So finally, when, it's, when, when will it be out? get this a lot. Um, <laughs> at the moment I can just say when it's ready. Um, it'll be it'll be a while still, um, but hopefully not too long. So when it's ready, it's ready and it'll be launched. Okay, thanks for listening to the presentation. Uh, yes, I, I like to show you the um, tic-tac-toe game I wrote in Cobalt Script. Um, it's not fancy, but um, I plan to uh, start simple and um, build up from there. Um, so you have this menu screen and you can go to the tic-tac-toe screen. As you can see, um, uh, um, transitions are already supported. You can uh, play the game. I think you probably know it. Oh, wins. So game over. Goes back to the main menu. And that's it. And let's try this again. Dum 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 dum. Dang humiliation. So, um, what's the code look like? Um, let's see. So, basically, the main menu starts out as a scene definition. That's uh, this part here. It sets the transition um, going to the tic tac toe scene as a radial counterclockwise transition. The basic idea is that um, if you go from this scene to that scene it will always use the same um, transition. Obviously you have some labels, a button um, which is simply a wrapper for a CC menu with a single item. Um, there will be more like these. And if you go to the tic-tac-toe scene um, it also has a very similar um, setup for the scene. The only difference is here the unpack um, which is created or which is done because um, the X's and O's are created um, when the scene loads and they are all set to invisible and um, that's also how um, the touch detection works. Um, even though they are invisible I can check each um, X or O um, and determine if the touch was on that um, sprite and if it was um, then it's simply set to be visible again. Then they are unpacked here into this sprite batch um, so that means they also sprite batch directly as well. And um, you can also notice that the um, that there are Lua init functions, um, which um, call basically Lua functions. And you also see that uh, several parameters are called with. Um, they are prefixed um, with the with. Um, those are initialization parameters. They are only needed for initialization, and um, um, they are actually required. Um, at least some level of them. Um, for example, to create a sprite, the parameter required is with file. You can also additionally add multiple um, parameters, which calls a different um, initializer on the Objective C side. In this case, it calls with file and rect. Okay, let's go to the create state machine part here, which is in the logic script. Basically, uh, the scene itself has runs a state machine, which uh, simply um, does the uh, game over check and goes back to the main menu if. Uh, um, some time has passed after the game over happened and calls uh, Lua functions uh, to derive the game logic. Um, the same goes for the X and O's, they also just call a Lua function every frame. This is the main function here um, for the check tic tacs. Um, basically each uh, X and O that's on the screen um, runs this um, once per frame. And further above, above um, there's just uh, extra functions which uh, determine um, um, if the game ends, should end, or um, who won the game and highlights the uh, winning X's or O's. And um, the global game state is created here, um, which is basically just a table, Lua table, um, which contains the, the variables um, that you want to use in the game and just define them there available to all functions. You can also of course um, set variables inside the self 
parameter. Okay, um, so basically self is the node and um, you can uh, run some properties to check certain events. Um, this actually is a function um, that's running on the Objective-C side and determines if a touch was in this node and the touch ended um, or whether it was a mouse click and the mouse click ended. The game of course runs on both uh, Mac versions and the simulator um, so it's cross-platform if you want to call it that. Uh, it's definitely dual platform. My IDEF blog a day post. Um, I'm afraid this time it was a bit longer rant about donations um, because I see them popping up basically everywhere on every project and um, um, while it's uh, okay for everyone to donate to whoever and whomever they like and um, for me a donation is uh, for you know sick kids, uh, flood victims, whatever, um, basically people in real need and um, the donate button um, is uh, often I think misused for projects um, uh, which are either not actually needing money, they just basically like to get paid um, from volunteers, which is fine, but um, uh, it ends up uh, encouraging others to do the same. So basically um, it's hard to come by a open source project or software project in general um, that doesn't support or doesn't ask for donations in one way or another. Um, and my plea is basically um, consider before you add a donate button, um, what you are actually doing and if you really need it and um, what kind of um, what level of transparency you are able to uh, uh, give your users and um, um, whether it's actually fair um, to others as well. A lot of things to consider here. Um, maybe you want to read it, maybe not. More interesting part is um, the uh, Cardion Smart website um, run by Justin Dyke um, released a Angry Ninjas game starter kit which you can see it's a ga um, sort of a um, Angry Birds type of game. Uh, really cool Xcode game project um, and Justin um, does a lot of work to uh, explain how things work. Um, there's a lot of graphics in there and um, it's uh, very well written code wise and um, and I'm telling you about this because um, yes I do get commissions for those projects and um, as I do for all the affiliate products and um, I really appreciate those payments. And finally after writing the uh, donation article if you really want to support me in a way that's really directly to me and not the projects that I work on um, because that's essentially what a donation is for an individual. It's not to the project, it's always to the individual. Um, I'd be happy to um, see some of those or one of those items arrive at my doorstep um, without being asked. Um, try to add a big variety, um, especially from price ranges. Um, so I'd be happy about that and I encourage everyone to um, do a similar thing because um, uh, gifts are actually better than donations because um, if you receive donations it's income and you have to um, uh, pay income tax for that so if you donate someone uh, $100 uh, maybe $30 of that um, go to the state and not the person um, whereas a gift is a gift. Okay I think um, that's it for today I hope I did not overdo it um, time wise and um, I'll see you again soon and uh, I get back to work on Cobalt Script. Bye bye.